Oops. <laughs> All right. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Play Pain of Life. Uh, <laughs> let me go turn on my comments. Uh, I'll explain why I'm laughing in a minute. <laughs> wow. Wow. This is, uh, I think, I think I'm, I may have, uh, unlocked a treasure trove here and I'll, I'll talk about this um in a minute let me let's let's do some spraying but first <laughs> turn on my comments holy crap man <laughs> all right we're gonna we're gonna spray some of these uh faceless stuff things down and then we'll let them dry and then i'll we will share in the stupidity because <laughs> wow wow there are people there are war gamers war gamers that are <laughs> there <laughs> there are war gamers defending the idea of not fighting from within a castle <laughs> So if you have a castle and you have the and you're you're facing a numerically superior foe, you would not fight from that castle. What? None. <laughs> hey, what's up, Nelson? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, by the way, your uh, your Resident Evil uh, stuff is done. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute, but. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I'll, I'll I'll set this up before we we start spraying. But essentially, what I did was um, you know, I'm part of a, a YouTube war gamer like video group or whatever, whatever you want to call it. These fucking 40k guys, they're all 40k guys essentially, and uh, and I posted a, a serious question and I said, hey, um, with how stupid the Battle of Winterfell was, can you guys name for me? Any portrayal of, of battle captured on film that is dumber, that has worse examples of strategic and tactical maneuvers than what is depicted on Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 3. Because I, I was thinking about this. Me and Canvas were talking about this a little earlier. And um, I, I, cannot, I cannot come up with a dumber example of anything I've seen on film regarding battle. You know, think about all the battles that you watched in movies. And I, I was just watching Kingdom of Heaven, which is one of my favorite, like, you know, medieval battle movies. Um, and, you know, so you think about Kingdom of Heaven. You can even think about modern warfare. Um, you can think about anything you might have seen in Excalibur. Any of the, like, great, great battles that you've seen on film. And... Have you ever seen anything dumber strategically or tactically than what you saw on Game of Thrones season eight, episode three? Because I can't find, I can't find, I cannot find a dumber battle than that one. Maybe Battles of the Bastards? I don't know. But yeah, it is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. I mean, essentially, you, I have 5,000 guys. You have 200 guys. You have a castle. I don't have any siege engines. You mean to tell me you're going to come out and meet me in the open field? <laughs> what? And there are war gamers defending defending that answer. Wow. Wow. I never thought I was that good at war gaming, but holy shit, people are stupid. Oh my god. 
I gotta wait. I gotta play games with these idiots, man. They're, this is the the two influence on Hammer Crew talking right now. Two influence on Hammer, mate. They're the dumbest war gamers I think I've ever heard. I, I maybe maybe we got it wrong. Maybe uh, maybe we that maybe that's why they play war games. They just they like they really are trying to learn such basic things as fight from with defend a castle if you have access to a castle use your ranged weapons if you have access to no you shouldn't do that it was a great idea to throw light cavalry into a numerically superior foe right in the front head on I, just, I might have to, these guys are so stupid that I might have to explain it to them in 40K terms because they can't, they don't even understand. Like, I might have to tell them, like, okay, if you have six war bikes, should you throw six war bikes into 70 hormigons? As it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just, that is just shame. That's, that's bad. That's bad. I mean, if you, if you can actually sit there with a straight face and try to defend, I, I've gotten into dumber arguments. <laughs> Canvas is laughing. Um, I've gotten into dumber arguments online. And then it's just amazing to me that People come out and defend the dumbest crap I think I've ever. That would be like saying, you know, I have, I'm, I'm thirsty and I have a glass of water in my hand. Should I drink the water? And then people on the internet coming out to say, no, you should not. <laughs> Oh my god. Let's get the primer down and then I'll read it. Well, let's read some of these answers. Because this is... This is prime... This is like... This is like a treasure trove of stupid war gamers. No wonder they still play 40k. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 40k players, gosh. Okay, I'm only sort of kidding. <laughs> Gosh. Okay, so upset. I think a third person has come in and go, Yeah, that's a great idea. Just charge light cavalry in the middle. <laughs> What's up, Chad? Okay. We gotta we, we gotta partake in this because this is I may have unlocked a gold mine here. Speaking of which. The name of this game is Faceless. This is like an Italian board game that came out on Kickstarter. Uh, and it just got to my house uh, yesterday. So we finished the Resident Evil stuff last night. And then I put these together and started basing them. This is just like terrain for the board. So... This really doesn't have much actual function in the game. You just sort of put it on the board instead of putting the terrain tokens down. These are this gives you that 3D kind of fun option. Now the the story of this game, and, and you'll see when we actually start getting to the miniatures, is this is very much in the vein of Stranger Things. In fact, it's almost the same plot as the game itself is almost the exact same plot as Stranger Things. So, uh, 
So you Stranger Things fans, whoever you are, you might be interested in this type of game just for the theme. But uh, the game mechanics are very strange. And that's why I got the game. I thought that this might be a really interesting co-op game for me and my son to play. Nice little creepy. So think of like the upside down, you know, in Stranger Things. This furniture is all like the upside down. So basically, um, in the game, you play a group of kids in the 90s. So not totally not Stranger Things, guys. It's in, they're in the 90s. And they lost their buddy, Ethan, I think is his name. And Ethan has been sucked away into the the other world or i don't know what they're calling the upside the upside down in this game but he 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 goes missing and you play in this game you play as one of the kids that is trying to uh rescue ethan and in order to rescue him from the other world you have to collect uh eight of his memories and the memories are on the board and there's a whole like set of mechanics like what you can do with his memories and that kind of stuff but once you get all of his memories, you win the game. Um, but there are several ways you can lose the game. Okay, And one of the ways is actually if you bump into terrain. Like if you run into terrain in the game, uh, you will lose the game unless you discard one of his memories. So memories function a couple of different ways in the game. Uh, this is – these little rabbit guys are like – I think they're – they're like part of an expansion to the game because I don't think they're in the game, in the in the core game. But they come out in an expansion and they they run around the board and they try to catch your your guys. So what's interesting about this game is everybody it's a co-op game and all the players are represented by a single piece on the board, and that piece is a compass. It's a magnetic. It's a it's an actual magnetic compass. Okay, and uh, what happens is where the compass moves is determined by magnets. So you actually, to play this game, you're creating and manipulating a magnetic field, an actual magnetic field, and it, it, it determines where, you're, where that compass goes, and you want to move the compass in a way to collect all of the memories but you're trying to avoid stuff like terrain. You're trying to avoid these little monster guys. And then there are the creatures that the, the game is actually named for the actual faceless. And I'll show you guys the, the faceless as soon as I get as soon as I get this down. So is this really kind of cool, kind of creepy aesthetic to the game? And I was mostly intrigued by the game because it has this magnet mechanic. And I think my son and my son would be is gonna find it really interesting. He kind of likes this like creepy, like he loves Halloween and he likes the like kind of creepy vibe to stuff. And so I bought this game specifically so that he and I can play it. But it also looks like it's a, a really good game. It's actually for like 14 and up. So, you know, when I'm done painting this, I'll bring it to uh, like a Thursday night. Maybe me and Nelson uh, can play it. Uh, maybe even stream a game of it here. Like maybe I do a late night game with Josie or somebody. Um, so I was talking to her about it a little bit, and she seems really interested in this game as well. Um, so it should be it should be kind of cool. Okay, get this. He like take buff hands and stuff him into buff hands. <laughs> What's up, Congo? So you get all these like weird little like bunny minion guys. But like if you if you look up um faceless board game on YouTube, uh, there was a channel. There was a guy that that previewed a game like he, he did a he played a demo game from a, a, a demo copy so that'll give you an idea you can also watch you know obviously you can watch dice towers review the game but what's i really think you kind of have to see the game 
in action to understand what it is really like. It's, I just kind of love that physical aspect of manipulating the magnetic field in order to get uh, the result that you want. So here's what I'm talking about. So, um, so you have these faceless on the board, okay? And you can see that they have this hole here on, in the bottom of their base. And the faceless have two forms of them. Like they have the benevolent form, which is this little girl here. Um, and then they have their evil faceless form, right? And the magnet you the magnets that you put in these are polarized, obviously. So so one side, so this the friendly side will attract the needle of the compass of the compass. So when you you know, so when the needle is pointing that way towards this faceless, you will move towards this faceless. When it's rotated to the evil form, then it will repel. Oh, you moved to Virginia. Cool. It will repel the compass. Okay, and so you're using you're using that magnetic force and using the specific position of the faceless to kind of steer the compass, right? To kind of steer where you go in the game and you know try to prevent yourself from like smacking in the terrain. Or, or you know, running into the big bad. These are some of the weirdest, coolest miniatures I think I've ever seen. They really do kind of remind me of like that Malifaux style. Um, what's it called? You know, like uh, um, the Neverborn. That's what this reminds me of. Like Malifaux Neverborn. So here's another one of the faceless. So, you know, read he has, and then you flip him over, and he's got a weird, like, dunce cat guy that also says read. Or does it say dead on this side? No, it says read. read. Weird. <clears throat> but these miniatures are really neat. Like, they, that, they're really, really cool looking. I can't wait for my kid to see these and try them. Try out the game with me. So like these faceless were all kids that were, you know, dragged into the other side and they became these like horrible creatures as well. Hey, what's up? Okay. There's that one. So you get three faceless. Here's the here's the last faceless. This cool kid. Like with a little phonograph. Hey, I'm gonna listen to music. And then he turns into rah, like pig kid. Weird creepy pig kid inside the phonograph. You can see the, the detail on the minis is fantastic. So these faceless do not, they never enter the board, right, where your compass is moving. They don't actually, you can move them around the board because they, they kind of exist on the outskirts of the board, but they never actually travel on the board. Um, and you kind of use that to help guide your compass around. You use the facing and you use their um, their positioning, right? But generally, because they're not on the board, they're not physically on the board. They won't. They don't exert as much influence on your compass as the big bad does. And the big bad is this guy here, Billy Goat Man. I think they call him Billy Billy Man, Billy Goat Man. And this is a piece that actually, yeah, this is the, the magnet game. 
this is a piece that actually um, is on the board and he moves on the board. So this guy also has a magnet in his base and he often he'll have the, the most amount of effect of where that needle points. Some of the creature design in this game is really awesome. I for, for some reason I thought that the game comes with like like your little kid characters as well, but your uh, but all the players are represented by that single compass. Now you get to play character like you at the start of the game, you pick a a little kid that you're going to play as as part of the party and each little kid has a, their own like special ability like maybe they get more cards during the game or they can look at the pile of cards during the game um so it's a step it's a pretty heavy co-op game and it's pretty fast it's first, like most games apparently go 30 to 45 minutes and you play up to four players Make sure all the weird angles on these. I just want to be sure I've got. I got them home. But that's all the the miniatures for the game. We're gonna we're gonna try to try to get most of the terrain done tonight, and maybe those weird bunnies. I'm just shooting the rest of my primer here. This model has a lot of weird angles with furniture. So you notice because these guys never get on the board, I didn't base them because they actually, they just kind of sit out in this blackness on the side of the board. So they'll probably look, you know, they're going to look more appropriate without that kind of weird other world terrain on them than the other models. So let's go ahead and do that. Let those dry for a minute. <clears throat> yeah, and, and then we'll 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 get back to. Uh, I got to read some of these comments. People defending the tactical, the strategic decisions made by Game of Thrones. Season 8, Episode 3. <laughs> oh, charging cavalry out in the middle of the zombie army was a great idea. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding you. There are people on the internet right now defending that decision. And the only response I have is, man, I, I wish I played, like, war games with you because you are bad. <laughs> Like, if that's your idea of a good idea, it is time to hang it up, sir. That's, you know, if you if you think putting your trebuchets out in front of uh, in front of your your infantry is a good idea, <laughs> then maybe 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 you need to be playing war games so you can see how bad of an idea that is. All right. I thought everybody does that, right? You put all your like mortars and you put them all in the front. Well, first you put your <laughs> first you throw all of your your light cavalry directly head on into the enemy that outnumbers you at least 20 to 1. It's a good idea. <laughs> Said the internet. That's a good idea. Wow. Just Wow. Okay, these guys do not get. These guys, I guess, are going to get more of a gray. So I'm going to spray the. We're going to spray the terrain, and we're going to do that weird thing where you do purple. You do purple and then yellow, and it gives them this weird kind of green hue that's really awesome. Right. So a little bit of purple here. 
And you, you treat this like a Xenophil Prime, so. You know, you do your thing. A little. Stranger Things, man. Stranger Things, the game. water in the line here. But yeah, that is that is the Winterfell challenge I have I have issued to the internet. Find me an example of a battle portrayed on film that uses dumber tactics than Game of Thrones season eight episode three. If you can find me, you know what? I will send you a prize. I will send you a prize if you can find me a battle, a planned battle for trade on film. Could be a siege, could be something like that, where the tactics employed were actually dumber than the tactics that they they planned that you had some of the quote unquote smartest people in all of Westeros sit sat down and plan this idea of throwing light cavalry out in front and then and then not defending their walls immediately. Like I I want to I want to see that. Uh, I need to be like I need to be part of this. These little bunnies are all kind of green too so where they get this. Yeah. Everything we're kind of purple right now. This will be this will give this this nice little weird like glow, this little green hue to everything. And because this is sort of the upside down, it should all look basically weird greens and browns. And a little bit more of this purple. You guys, anybody else working on anything cool? Or, once again, if you can find me a dumber battle, that's that's what I'm interested in. But yeah, I had to watch some. Um, I had to watch some. Kingdom of Heaven because like I really like the siege tactics that they use in that movie and it's just a great movie. Director's cut that movie is really good. It's like it was it was a way underrated film. I saw that in the the theater years when it first came out and it just never I don't know it didn't have much traction. But you know, you play games like Saga, you play Hell Dorado, you play stuff like that. Kingdom of, he of Heaven is like, well, there's a lot of like old school war gamers too that really love that movie. Second set of piggies. That's cool. Billy Goat Man will start off kind of green. He kind of reminds me of like Krampus a little bit. Just because he's got the big sack on his back. And... All right. So all the purple's down. Let's shoot some yellow. Or for you Minotaur folks, uh, I think the color we're going to be shooting is mustard gas.
And then let's do that. And I'll show Nelson his minis. And then we're going to read some comments because we have to. We have to. All right. Uh, where's that mustard gas color? Okay. So we shoot the mustard gas. Wait, that's ghost tip. I'm lying. There's mustard gas. <clears throat> Everything will look kind of purple right now. I'll shoot this. And the lighter you shoot it, the better the effect is. Like you really kind of bog this in and you'll see it, it'll start to, it'll start to warm up and start to turn green. You can see it turning green right now. In the back. Oh shit, 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 shit. Yes, they're right here, actually. They're right here. Can I finish the shooting this color? I have been meaning to do that for like three days and I'm super sorry. Because you messaged me Sunday and I was running around with my boys. And then when I got home, I never actually got back downstairs until way like way later in the evenings but thank you for reminding me we will get to that let's see what i got i tell you what I tell you what you wanted the rubble bases and whatever i have is yours <laughs> i i have no use for them other than i uh Occasionally use them to keep Rumble Slam minis at bay. See how these guys are all turning kind of green? It's cool. All right. I feel like I'm missing one of the pieces. I am definitely missing one of the pieces of terrain. Where'd it go? Eh. It'll show up. Reminds me of Lord of the Rings when they're going to release the vassals of the undead for the path. Yeah. I am kind of going for, I mean, that's what we're going for, right? We're kind of going for like a haunted wood. And since this is terrain, this is essentially terrain and thugs, you know, there's not going to be a lot of detail going into these. We're more going for that overall effect here. Any rabbits? No, in the well, the studio art has them kind of like they're all like a a dark green color, and they just have red glowing eyes, and that's a, that's about all you can make out on them. I had at one point I thought about maybe just painting them all slightly different colors, and I was like, I don't care that much. <laughs> Like, I don't even know if these are going to get used if we don't like their rules, because they're not part of the base game. We'll see. Ah. Whoa. The water in the line there. Lenny's from hell. Yes. 
This brave Billy Goat guy. Uh, water pulsing. Luckily, he's not that green. All right, let's let those dry for a minute. And let's get a couple of things. First, we're going to get the Resident Evil minis that I painted. And then, uh, And then we'll we'll find some Batman bases, which they should be like in a big old pile here at the bottom of my. All right, so I'll push all those guys away. All right, let's go get the Resident Evil stuff. I don't remember all the names of the characters, but they're super small, so I think they're cool. Maybe the least cool guy is this guy, the fat dude with the suspenders. I forget his name. He's like the chief of police, I think. He kind of gets um, corrupted, I believe. And then you got, uh, then you got this dude. He's the. So I'm going with the nineteen, the nineteen um, ninety eight artwork. So he's got like the light blue cop uniform as opposed to the brown cop uniform. This is one of the guys that. Like is injured when you run into him. Forget his name, Marvin, I think. Then you got, uh, then you got Hunk. He's basically a SWAT dude. Super cool. He's just cool. Like I love this guy. He's awesome. Then you got, then you got the main. You start getting in the main characters. So you got Ada Wong. Ada Wong. Um, I looked at her dress, Nelson, and she does not have white pinstripes there. Those are just sewing lines. And the neckline was different than how I had painted it originally. So, so I fixed that. Okay, so that's her. Then you got uh, then you got Leon S. Kennedy. He's got that classic blue and black, the RPD cop uniform, little stars RPD thing on the back. Super cool. And then you got uh, Claire Redfield, who's cool. Also, really like Claire. So yeah, those are the those are the Resident Evil minis. And uh, let's see what we got for Batman stuff. Yeah, no problem, Nelson. Those painted, you know, one advantage to them being so small is they paint up super fast. Uh, the disadvantage is you can't get the level of detail that I normally like to get on minis. But I think they look okay. So I believe we are looking for these guys, right? So let's see how many of these guys I have. I should have a lot. I just throw them in a bag. I'm assuming you probably want the 40s as well. But I, every time I would buy Batman shit, or Nelson would ask me to paint shit. I was just throwing these in my cabinet. <laughs> so probably have a lot of these. Might not want to waste the rest of my feed finding them all, but let's call it a bag. There's going to be a bag of this stuff. So Shadowcat, go ahead and send me a PM when you get a chance. And we'll work out some shipping. But there we go. Lots of these. Wow. Well, I will in a minute. We're going to just want to see. They're all kind of sitting here at the bottom of this thing. Nevertheless, I guess you, you're getting the picture. I got lots. Got lots and lots of this stuff. Wow. Okay. 
Stop. Okay. Well, we'll we'll get. Oh look, there's actually this is one of the newer kind. They have a slightly different uh, texture on them. I can't imagine why I kept these other than I was like, oh, I'll like temporary temporarily glue shit to them when I'm painting stuff that goes on clear bases. So I have these other bases that, you know, if I if I have to wreck to get the model off when I'm transferring to the base, it's not gonna it's gonna be no skin off my back, in other words. Okay. All right, let's let's throw these in a bag. Or I forget, but here everybody's on camera. We all saw that I found a bunch of them. So if my lazy ass can get these in the mail to you, then we'll be cool. So lazy. Oh. What's the limited edition as bats? I don't know what those are. But let's go ahead and throw these in a bag. Are those, a, is that that set of um, three models that has, did I paint those? I don't remember. If Chris bought it, then yes, I've painted it. I'm not sure what, but I don't know what set that is. Anyway, here, okay. Like you're gonna get a whole bag of these. <laughs> Hopefully I have more, a couple of these 40s. All right, can I take another break and, and we can read, let's read this argument that I've started. Yeah, 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 I think I've painted those. All right, let's see, uh, okay. So, <laughs> oh gosh, yo. Okay, here's one person. I don't know. Yeah, they're saying I don't think I can think of a worse one. Yeah. So no one so far, everyone has failed the Winterfell challenge. No one can think of a dumber battle captured on film than that one. <laughs> so, and when I mean dumber, not like, not like, uh, you know, silly. I mean, like, they sat down, you had a bunch of people sat down and planned a battle and used the opposite of good tactics all throughout the battle. And then, obviously, but that's Game of Thrones now. Like, that's that show now. I think what, ha what, what you can, I I'm just going to make the prediction now that the final battle of Game of Thrones the the heroes will use the worst tactics possible and the bad guy Cer Cersei will have good tactics and she will be beating them and then the rise the writers will lazily come up with some Deus Ex Machina thing to save our heroes. The end. That's my that's my prediction for Game of Thrones. I don't even think that's a brave prediction. I think that's the formula that the writers have taken for every battle post George R. R. Martin being involved in the show. I really mean that. I think that the even Battle of the Bastards, if you look at Battle of the Bastards, like, oh, Battle of the Bastards was great. Yeah. You know, it was it's entertaining. But if you think about how how stupid Jon Snow is as a combat leader, like if that was his if that was his grand strategy, this dude should not be in it in charge of any armies. Like he is he is phenomenally bad. At uh, at planning battles, he is he is, and, and then you have uh, uh, then you have uh, Tyrion, who's supposed to be this really brilliant guy because he came up with the with the defense of the Blackwater, and then he, you know ever since season five, Tyrion has gone like like functionally brain dead. He is one of the dumbest people on the show, 
it, like no questions asked. He's he's clearly just off the rails. Uh, not watch out there anything else. <laughs> okay. Uh, what? I probably I uh, trying to figure out what I need to do here. I think I will. Let's shoot them with like a, a really light color, like a really pale, a really pale color to kind of give us that that weird ghostly look that we're going for. All right. It's true though, I mean, it, it's been a while. Since there are a number of things that are missing from modern entertainment, if you will. One of those things is they just nobody can write a battle anymore for some reason. You know, there's some great military movies that have come out that are just great, like strictly military um, style movies. And I don't want to take anything from those because those are awesome. But some of these, like, these big budget people that come up with battles and just have no idea how to set them up. I think it would be a great benefit to actually sit down with, uh, you know, if you can't sit down with an actual military person with a military strategic background, failing that shit, sit some more, like get some war great gamers and sit them down. Like get, get like three war gamers and go, okay, here's your forces. You get, you get 100,000 undead. You go to one player and give him 100,000 undead. And you give the other player a castle. You give him light cavalry, Dothraki. You give him one Sully. You give him Northmen. You give him defenses, <laughs> right? You get that. You, you get that. Get Like, just sit two average freaking war gamers that haven't fanboyed out over this shit. And let them suss their way through a fight. And, like, take notes. Because you're probably going to have a better episode if you do that. That's all I'm saying. That's all I am saying. All right. I think I kind of like this moth green. This is kind of cool. Let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah. I'm really running this uh, airbrush thinner down to the last of it. But yeah, this game looks fun. It does look fun. It's probably going to be one of the more interesting games I own. I can't wait to see my, my uh, son play this. He wants to learn Monster Apocalypse. And I said, slow your roll, kid. We got to learn, you got to learn uh, Relic Blade first. And now he's kicking my ass in Relic Blade, so. <laughs> wow, that seems to be having no impact. It's just color is not color is not as intense as I might have hoped. It's okay though. I can just build it. For some reason, when they made these minis, I thought that the minis had like, I thought they had, I thought these were like, uh, like little kids in their pajamas, and they had the face cut out, and they'd be like weird, creepy little kid faces in there. Some weird shit, though. So the billy goat guy, he is on some sort of suit. Hmm. 
There we go. I'm not sure why these are all flat on the top, other than maybe you stick the little bunny guys on them and they jump off of the terrain. Who knows? I don't think this green is cut at me. I think I need an even brighter green. I don't know why this has like Venus flytrap sitting underneath that. It's like perfectly flat leaf. Yeah, this green isn't this green isn't really doing anything. So let's uh let's go a little bit lighter. Yeah, let's go a little bit lighter. Let's go with like uh let's go with this color, foul green. It's gonna give it like a weird, like minty green feel to it. I think what's gonna take the longest amount of time is painting the actual faceless stuff. I also got uh, anybody else here get their uh, shipping notice on Joan of Arc get that shipping notice coming in I'm like holy shit now I have like way too many board games coming in I don't hardly ever play board games anymore <laughs> That doesn't mean I don't want to play board games, because I do. I just don't have time. Like, if you're going to make me say, okay, here's your one night a week to play games, you can either play board games, like, you could either play one board game all night, or you could play, like, three games of Guild Ball. I'm picking Guild Ball. Ooh, yeah, that's kind of nice. I like that. That's, yeah, that's what we're talking about. That looks nice. Creepy man. Yeah, now they're starting to look creepy creepies. Yeah, right now though, like, yes, I say that, but I'm kind of tentatively holding my breath to get that, to get some of these new captains in. Can't wait to put Ribbit on the board. Like Rivet, man, Rivet looks exciting to me. Rivet looks like Midas, but working. Although, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna spend more time with Midas. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we gotta keep plugging away at that. There's still some stuff there to be discovered. The last couple of games I played with Midas, I did not like my game plan in either of those games. So there's still there's still stuff I want to play around with. I don't think I put I'm gonna I, I'm gonna play around with the roster much because I think the roster, you know, the eight or nine players I run with Midas, pretty good. It's just the 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 specific game plan I think needs adjustments, and I need to be more flexible with the uh, with those game plans and being more flexible with the game plans means i need to better utilize the pieces that are on the board because i feel like i've got the crew in front of me that i that i have a good shot of of succeeding with but i i get locked into how i expect them to play without really without really picking up on the the flow and the tempo of the game, like without really letting the conditions of the game um, help me make better decisions on the board. So, and and that's a that, that's the thing that I sort of left behind with the Masons. 
right? Because I used to play the Masons a lot more like that, where I'm reading the board state and playing, trying to play better in accordance with the, the board state. You're LAX again. What the hell? Why? You picking up uh, you picking up one of your folks? LAX is terrible. Never go to LAX if you don't have to. The only time I can think of going to LAX is uh, yeah, international flight. You know, you know. Otherwise, you just fly out of John Wayne. Spray a little brown on these. Get some, but they look cool. There, it's like now it's definitely like looks like evil supernatural force. Yeah, yeah. I figured you're there to pick up family because. I think anybody taking a domestic flight better be flying into John Wayne. Pretty cool. All right. Let's, uh, a little bit of brown. What kind of brown do I want? Probably this russet brown. Done any travel for work yet this year? I'm pretty stoked on that. I don't think that's going to last long. I drink your horse and spread your milk. Yeah, I think there are people that are, uh, there's a movement to try to change the name of the airport from John Wayne to who knows what the hell because of, you know, because of offensive shit John Wayne has said in the past. I'm like, who gives a shit? John Wayne, come on, man. Of course John Wayne said some, some probably offensive borderline racist shit in the past. That's, that's John Wayne. Like we we let that slide. John Wayne is hilarious. <laughs> uh, all right, so Russet Brown. All right. I wonder, I wonder if somebody will be able to come up with a worst battle. You know, it's another cool battle. You're talking about, like, some of your favorite. Yeah, it's a good question. What is? What are some of your favorite on-screen battles? You know, I think when, when people talk about some of the great on-screen battles, I think of uh, Black Hawk Down. I think of... Uh, I think of Saving Private Ryan, you know, the battles that are in that movie. Um, if, we, if we talk more medieval stuff, one of my favorite movies is Excalibur. Um, you know, the beginning of Gladiator, pretty cool battle. As one-sided as that was, still a cool battle. Uh, let's see. Obviously, Kingdom of Heaven. It's one of my favorites. Why would I did black base gray highlights and chestnut ink wash? That's a nice quick way to do uh, wood.
Um, I even like like Starship Troopers. <laughs> Starship Troopers had some cool battles. I also really, really like the battles in Excalibur. Because I just love Excalibur. Uh, Conan, the battle for the mound. That's now that's it's really more of a skirmish. But there's some battle level tactics that they use. You know, they, they fortify a position and they take down as Conan would put it, two stood against many. But uh, he's actually kind of being a dick there because Mako helped. Mako killed one with his shield, with his spear, and he even calls it out. I killed one with my spear. And <laughs> like, give Conan, give Mako credit for being there. He was there. What the recent Avengers movies? I did not watch the Avengers movies. That's right. I said it. I do not care about the Avengers movies. I said it. Get mad at me, Internet. I promised my wife I will. Oh, Troy, yeah. Troy had some cool fights. The beachhead scene, like when they first land, was pretty sick. Um, about Zulu. Zulu is a great, it's a great. The woman who played the ghost is the leading woman in Killajoys. I'm not sure. Ant-Man and the Wasp versus a ghost. 300. Yeah, 300 it was interesting. They Because they really... It's really kind of one battle. That's kind of cool. You know, and they, they really only have, like, the two strategies. We're going to use a phalanx and we're going to defend this narrow path. That's cool. I'm trying to think, like, what is the what is the worst battle uh, outside of Game of Thrones? Like, what is the worst, dumbest battle? I've seen? Now, even though tactically it's not a horrible, it's not like an abysmal battle, but the only one that seems to be coming to mind right now is the battle for Endor. <laughs> That's the only one. It's like. Yeah, the little Ewok teddy bears. They have, the, you know, they're throwing rocks and logs at stormtroopers, and the stormtroopers are losing <laughs> anything in The Last Jedi. I didn't watch those, so I can't count them. But I will absolutely take your word for it. Now, do you think, is there a dumber, is there like a more um, strategically idiotic battle that happens in The Last Jedi that's worse than Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 3. Shoot all the lasers. The Billy Goat guy looks like he's like part tree trunk. All of the movie. <laughs> Let's get this weird sack on his back. 
Well, you know, a lot of gamers could just field him this way and be happy with it. And it's not bad. Like, he doesn't look bad. He looks kind of cool. Just, you know, just these, this mix of colors on him. <laughs> I'm trying to think more other like pitched battle scenes that we're missing. Like we're remembering, I think we're we're remembering mostly really really good pitched battle scenes, and not that many. Like bad. I I've been trying to figure that out. So if you look at the bag, it just looks like a bunch of stickers. And then looking at the it looks like a burlap bag. So I'm immediately thinking this is like Krampus. Because I love Krampus and I want him, I want this guy to be Krampus. Um but the weird thing about him is he does have like a creepy side, and he's supposed to have a friendly side, but I, you know, which is his back. But like, is this full of like apples or fruit or something that, you know, to entice little kids to come follow him? I do not know. Let me give him a little more brown on the, on the, the sack. Net now. They're full of souls. Maybe. I think whatever it is, it's super cool. So normally what I would do with these, once you get them to this like point where the airbrush has done most of the blocking that you want it to do, I normally let them dry overnight and then I'll come back and hit them with a highlight. The next day, I'm gonna get a little more brown on the trees. But yeah, these are gonna look great, man. These these look nice and creepy. And I don't need to do much painting at all on these. Yes, there is a hand in the tree. There's hands. So there's that hand in the tree. And then, I'm not sure. And there's that giant hand. I got this guy. I'm pretty sure you do sit the the little bunny guys on top of these. Otherwise, like, why would they all be flat on the top? There you go. 
Here. I would do the little highlight right now, but the paint's just way too fresh on these. They're gonna, it's gonna just rub off paint. They're cool though. Let's do the, uh, let's finish the Zenithal Prime on the actual faceless. And we'll call it. You're gonna have to remember to put Nelson. You're gonna be around tomorrow. Maybe we can meet up tomorrow. And we'll get you your Resident Evil Two stuff back to you. Okay, so we'll get all these guys. So we got a Zenith of Prime and these guys. David and Alien Covenant or the PC game called Stasis. Never heard of Stasis. Josie was telling me about this, uh, the Alien RPG that's coming out. That's an, that seems kind of, seems like a really cool universe to put in, set an RPG in, if you're going to play like a sci-fi RPG. To me, anyways, probably way more interesting than, uh, than the Star Wars RPG. Actually, finally ran out of airbrush thinner. You have served well, my friend. Uh, where is that gray that I normally use? Ah. Always an issue. Finding shit on my table, always an issue. Here we go. But if you do this to the minis, once you get the, once they dry, you can take a regular brush to them. It's going to go pretty quick. All right, here we go. You see the minis are kind of complex. They're great though. I do think this is one of those games where you really should paint it. Well, I think about all games, but I think one of this one of these games is this game in particular, if you really want the full effect of the game, like the full gaming experience, you should paint. You should paint the faceless at least. Like you don't need to do the the terrain and all that. You could just use the tokens, but I do think you should at least paint these because these are awesome. Like that's a really cool. There's so much character in that. The alien skull. This is sick, twisted. Who's <laughs> designing them? <laughs> I 
I do not have an answer. I don't know. Alien is, is the whole the original, you know, not just the the architecture of the aliens, but the you know the whole H.R. Geiger designs of the aliens. It's just, they're fantastic. Completely like like you have to be a madman on some level to design that. And it's just it's just like the coolest shit ever. Like that's fairly creepy. The little girl getting pulled into the mirror and then coming out like evil cat. The grin on that cat is nuts. My question is, Predator 2, there's an alien skull in the ship, an alien covenant, and David the sick twist the fuck is designing them. <laughs> yeah, in, well, not that this is anywhere near canon, but, like, in AVP, didn't they say the aliens design, I'm sorry, the uh, Predator species designed the aliens? To make the for like maybe they didn't design them but for sure they were like cultivating them on earth so that they can play their sport against aliens on earth i don't understand this mini he's a he's a pig kid inside Inside this little uh, chest here. So I guess this kid was like going to listen to some music and then he got pulled in. <laughs> music <gasps> don't listen to the rap music it's for the devil and then they, they pull him in Rah! it comes out as an evil battle pig <laughs> don't you listen to that heavy metal music this is the 90s so so i think it's hard to say what what was in the 90s uh what is that marilyn manson time and then you get you get like gangster rap at, at its height in the '90s. So, so what was what was considered the bigger enemy music-wise to organize religion? What would I, I I know who Tipper Gore would pick? She would go after rap, but I don't know what like the general moral mass would would go after. Is is uh. Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie, but I think they're later. I think they came in in the late '90s and early 2000s. But so I think it was like so '90s. You're probably talking, yeah, uh, early '90s though. Uh, you had Two Live Crew, and Tipper Gore hated Two Live Crew, <laughs> which is not gangster rap. It was just extremely dirty, raunchy rap. That's all. <laughs> it was not. Uh, it wasn't gangster rap. I do agree, though. I do think gangster rap sucked. I always hated gangster rap. Although, I loved N.W.A. and Eazy E when they when their first albums came out, and I loved, um, I loved Ice T when his shit came out. But honestly, I was not like once the D.O.C. came out. When like ninety two or ninety three, I was that was it. I was like, I'm out, I'm out. I'm listening. I still love rap music, but I'm listening to other shit. I'm not listening to. And however you classify them, I still love Wu Tang Clan. Still love, <laughs> still love the Wu Man. Pick up my love for them. All right. 
let's go. Uh, let's put a white on these. Airbrushing white always sucks. Like the hardest color to airbrush. So let's see. He so this kid got pulled into a mirror. The other kid got pulled into, I guess, a the the cabinet with the phonograph. Uh, 1980s, the church was after Iron Maiden and Judas Priest and ACDC, Akadaka, and uh, yeah, for sure, for sure, Iron Maiden. The Christian heavy metal bands are awesome. <laughs> All right. Pick little corners, you know, just to bounce light off of. So this kid turned into a dunk. What I understand is this game is called The Faceless, and they keep, they face, they, like, they definitely have faces. I don't understand that. Whoa. Okay, get that liquid off there. These kids definitely have faces. This kid looks kind of Asian. Look at his look at his eyes. Look at that. Do you want to come read? I will teach you. <laughs> he reminds me of, uh, like, uh, Martin Prince. Damn, 90 minutes. You parked shit. Get out of L.A. dude. Sounds terrible. Yeah, this is Martin Prince from The Simpsons. It says, I want to think he changed that to dead. Yeah, he crossed out the R and put a D there. But like, what did he get? Did he get pulled? It looks like he got pulled through the sandwich board. He got pulled through the sandwich board. To the other side. It's not okay. <laughs> I may actually choose to ignore the studio art entirely and just paint these the way I want to paint them. The way this like kid with the pig face is sitting, it just reminds me of the purge for some reason. I, not that I ever want to think about the purge, but there is a an awesome premise for a movie that I think they fucked up royally.
Everything agreed. Yeah. Everything about the purge is wasted. That's that movie's on my list of I want a billion dollars. What are the movies I would remake? The purge is on there. The G.I. Joe live action series is on there. Speaking of which, did you see that they're making a new Masters of the Universe movie? And then the, the, the kid that they picked to play He-Man just, I don't know. He looks wrong and not He-Man in any way to me. <laughs> Like, I shouldn't be using the word kid and He-Man in the same sentence, first of all, right? He-Man should not look like a boy. You see what He-Man looks like. He-Man essentially looks like Fabio. Like, he looks like He-Man is a, is a grown-ass man, whether we're talking Dolph Lundgren or Fabio, you know, Along those type real chiseled features, but 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 even beyond that, beyond the blonde hair, beyond the you know the the shredded, the ripped out, roided body, not even beyond all that, he needs to look like a grown ass man. Like the the person that they picked to be He Man, I'm sure is in great physical shape and all this, but he just looks like a like a boy, like a like a young kid. Nobody wants that. He-Man is a buff man. If there was ever a time to put a buff man's on screen, you know, every space marine dream, essentially, this is the time, right? All them dudes at Venice Beach and shit, that just, those dudes should, if they're not He-Man, they need to be an extra in He-Man. But the next question is, why the hell are we making a He-Man movie now? He-Man couldn't be any less relevant now than ever. I can't think of another time in history where a character like He-Man is completely irrelevant. You know, the days of the buff man that saves the universe are, are, are gone now. Nobody, nobody wants that. Even Chris Hemsworth. They're like, no, nah, let's use it more for comedy. Like nobody, sadly, nobody wants that. I would much rather watch, I mean, I'll watch Jason Momoa as He-Man before I watch this kid. At least Jason Momoa, hell, fuck it. I'll watch The Rock as He-Man before I watch this kid. Like, it sh like again, I should not be saying kid in He-Man in the same sentence just doesn't that's doesn't compute my being ageist fuck yes i am being ageist over this perhaps the kid is prince adam but that was the funny thing about he-man <laughs> prince adam is this gigantic roided out dude and the only difference is he's wearing this weird pink he's wearing like a pink vest and a white shirt <laughs> The only thing that makes him not He-Man. <laughs> Maybe, though. Maybe you're right. Maybe the kid, you know, and, and, he, and he transforms into Jason Momoa or something. Like, like Shazam. Maybe. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, it is 11.05, and I have... I cannot do anything else to these guys tonight because I will start pulling pain off if I do. But here's the general uh, the general steps from here is I'm going to hit all of these models with a uh, like an off white um, dry brush to hit all the edges, and then I'll go through do the inking and the detailing on them. But I'll give you. But let's just do one last look here. Jason Momoa is Wolverine. Uh, yeah, you know, I'd buy it. He's a little tall, but hell, Hugh Jackman was super tall. 
I want to. I want that like five foot four Wolverine that we got in the comics. A little angry little man. Angry. Let's look at these guys. They're cool. Uh, yeah, this. I think I'm excited. This game should be pretty fun. We'll see. We shall see. It's an interesting co-op game. For sure. Whew. But let us go to bed. So, look at that guy. Free! <laughs> so, with that, we're going to call this feed to a close. Want to thank everyone for watching. Have a good night, guys. And we'll catch you on the next one.